So hi everyone and welcome to this video on a much deeper drive, uh, dive on our concepts on the risk premium and the certainty equivalent. And this is again part of our module on financial decision making under uncertainty. So if you recall from the last video, we discussed uh, sort of indicators or uh, measures on the degree of risk aversion. And we said that this behavior of risk aversion stems from the fact that people are not willing or, or are generally not willing to take fair gambles and would rather be paid uh, or be bribed in, in, in some sense of a certain monetary payoff. And they'd rather just take that because a, uh, a, a fair gamble is something that we have proven uh, in the past few videos that is something that is not generally desired by a risk averse individual. So in this video, we're sort of going to pin down on the concept of the risk premium and the certainty equivalent and sort of go at a deeper dive on it, at least intuitively. And we're going to go through uh, an example of it before we start to express these things in, in common parlance, which is in the way of rates of return. So we're going to start with this deep dive in this video. And then in the next video, we're going to start to discuss things on rates of return, which is probably more familiar to standard finance notation. So more generally, a risk averse agent, okay, and we said that this risk averse agent generally has a strictly concave utility function, will always value an investment at something less than the expected value of its payoffs. So what does this mean? So uh, consider uh, an investor with a current wealth W naught. Okay, so the, the investor is endowed with some wealth W naught, and he or she is evaluating uh, some uh, con or considering participating in some gamble or some gamble with a risky payoff, which is Z tilde. And Z tilde, again, uh, the result of that is random, right? So for any uh, cumulative distribution function, uh, provided that the investor's utility function is strictly concave. We proved in the past few videos that the utility of the sure wealth plus the expected value of the gamble is greater than the expected utility of the gamble, of participating in the gamble, right? So uh, that's the expected, uh, note that the expected utility of Z tilde is the expected value of the risky payoff. And all this means is that if an uncertain payoff is available for sale, a risk averse investor will only be willing to buy it at a price less than its expected uh, payoff, which kind of makes sense, right? For example, the most that uh, you could sort of gain from a particular gamble is like $10. You wouldn't be willing to pay, and, and that $10 is some uncertain amount. You could be getting $10, you could get much less than $10 no right person would be willing to pay $10 to participate in a gamble wherein they already had $10 prior, right? So the investor at, at most would be willing it to pay, would be willing to pay a price less than the expected value of the payoff, right? So let's go with a deeper dive. Uh, the maxima or the cert or, or, or what, which is the certain or the sure amount of money an individual is willing to pay to acquire an, an uncertain opportunity defines what we refer to as the certainty equivalent of the risky prospect, which is the, uh, we denote it as this one, which is C E W naught Z tilde, right? So that's, uh, that stands for certainty equivalent. And we've discussed this certainty equivalent before we compared it to some sort of like bribe. And similarly, the certainty equivalent in some monetary amount uh, is the sure or certain payoff at which an investor would see no difference between the risky prospect and the sure amount. What does this mean? Well, for example, consider that same gamble of, um, of uh, the expected value of a gamble is $10. Say, uh, by theory, we said that the individual would not be willing to pay $10 for that gamble because the, why would he or she take it? Because the $10 is some sure thing if he or she spends it, say, to enter the gamble. So say uh, we have that $10 gamble, so the maximum amount uh, that he or she could win from the gamble is $10, and he or she had to choose between taking that gamble or receiving a sure wealth of $8, right? So 
the share wealth of eight dollars is given to you no matter the odds so you always end up with that eight dollars but with the with when you participate in the gamble you could win above eight dollars you could win up to ten dollars or you could lose an amount or you know below eight dollars and in essence what the certainty equivalent is is that it, whatever that amount is it's going to make you indifferent between receiving that certain amount, which is the $8, and participating in that gamble. That's the concept of the certainty equivalent. So the difference between the certainty equivalent and the expected value of the risky prospect is the uncertain payoffs risk premium, right? Or in, in essence, an insurance premium. And we denote that as PI, W not Z tilde. So we denote uh, CE is your certainty equivalent, and that's a function of W not and Z tilde. Then you have your insurance premium, which is pi, which is a function of W not and then Z tilde. Okay. Now the risk premium represents um, the uh, the peso amount the risk averse investor requires to be compensated for engaging in some risky investment, right? So it represents the peso amount, the risk averse investor requires to be compensated for engaging in the risky investment. And in essence, the larger the peso value of, or the larger the monetary value of the insurance premium, then the more pesos he requires to engage in risky investment. In general, it's uh, an indirect measure of risk aversion because he or she would need to be compensated more for taking on uh, more risk, right? So it's, it's indirectly that. Uh, it's natural to think of it as a measure of absolute risk aversion. So that's our concept there. So uh, we can illustrate and it mathematically and graphically. So more formally, so let me just correct that. That's W naught. Okay, so more formally, consider an investor with a current wealth W naught and a utility function and some utility function who has the opportunity to acquire a risky investment with some random payoff Z tilde with mean or expected value X, uh, that this is the expected value of the payoff and some say variance sigma squared Z. So by definition, okay, by definition, the certainty of the risky prospect Z tilde, okay, and, and that's the certainty equivalent, and the risk premium are the solutions to the following equations. So if you look at this, so this is the expected utility you get out of participating in the gamble. And this is equal to essentially the, uh, the utility, okay, equal to the utility, right, of your sure wealth plus the certainty equivalent. So remember, this is what we were pointing out er uh, earlier on. Okay, when these, when you are indifferent between these two things, participating in the gamble, getting the utility, or receiving the sure amount of wealth, that is what constitutes what we call a certainty equivalent, right? So th th this part stems from that indifference in decision, right? So for, so that's part of the indifference thing that we were talking about earlier. Now, it, it, as you, as I mentioned earlier, right? you can illustrate a risk premium as the difference between the expected uh, outcome less, uh, the, uh, uh, less something. And you can sort of express it like this. So the, you can express the certainty, I'm sorry, whoops, let me go back. Um, let me go back to some slide. I accidentally moved uh, here. Uh, um, let's, I need to go further, 589. Okay, I just need to go back. So uh, as I said earlier, right, in order for a consumer to be sort of, um, sort of indifferent between the two, okay, indifferent between the two, uh, one way for that to happen is a person can be bribed by some amount, which is your certainty equivalent in which he or she would be indifferent to participating in the gamble. And this last term here, it just uh, stems from how we compute the certainty equivalent in that the certainty equivalent, right? The certainty equivalent, W naught Z, is just equal to the expected out value of the outcome or the expected outcome of the risky prospect minus the amount that, uh, that minus the insurance premium, 
right? Or or the amount that the investor would be would need it to have been compensated for by taking on the, the extra risk. So it just implies these two conditions, right? That the certainty equivalent is equal to the expected value of the uh, risky investment less the insurance premium and that the insurance premium is just equal to the expected value less the certainty equivalent. So just simple algebra there. Okay, now in the equation that we stated in the last slide, WC is the certainty equivalent wealth of his risky investment with the risky investment. And that is by definition, okay, as we we're stepping from earlier, the certainty equivalent is the amount that when received with certainty makes the individual indifferent between the risky prospect and the certain amount. It's, you, would, you would feel the same way about participating in the gamble or just receiving this certain amount. So similarly, you can regard a certainty equivalent as the amount that when you receive it with certainty makes the individual indifferent between investing in the risky prospect and having a risky uh, wealth or final wealth of W naught plus Z. So remember, if the consumer or the investor partakes in the gamble, the final wealth is risky because you don't know exactly what Z will be. So W will be W tilde, which is some final risky wealth. And that will make you indifferent between that and not investing in the risky prospect and just having a sure wealth. So in essence, W naught, which is your initial wealth, plus a certain sure amount of payoff, which is a certain equivalent, is equal to that WC term that you've seen in the last slide. Okay, so that's the concept of that. So we can see here in the graph the certainty equivalent. And so this part here is your certainty equivalent. So this is your certainty equivalent. And this part here would be your insurance premium, right? So insurance premium. And, and that's how they look like uh, in our graph earlier. Actually, this is the same graph that we had. We just illustrated the distances of what constitutes the certainty equivalent and uh, what will uh, what constitutes the insurance premium. So if you notice, W naught is here. That's your initial wealth. And, and then this one is uh, when you are here, this is W naught plus the certainty equivalent. And at this point, this is equal to WC, which is what we saw earlier. And uh, if, if, you, if you note that the utility you gain from here is equal to this point here, which is the expected utility of the gamble. And that makes you indifferent between uh, this one, which is, uh, uh, which is somewhere here, which is the wealth. Okay, plus uh, this gamble here. And the insurance premium, again, is just a manipulation of that same formula. So that's our concept of the risk premium and the certainty equivalent. So uh, let's go a bit on a deeper intuition wherein we start to incorporate Jensen's inequality in it, which is, again, a simple concept which we learned before. So why is the certainty equivalent equal to that sort of form? Why is it equal to the expected value of the, pay of the payoff less the insurance premium. And why is it that for risk averse investors, the insurance premium must be positive? And the answer to this is just that when you follow it from Jensen's inequality, what, what we said is that the utility of uh, the wealth plus the payoff is always greater than the expected utility of wealth plus the risky payoff. And in essence, Right, uh, this thing here, that expected utility of wealth, we showed that in the past slide, this was equal to just um, uh, a certain equivalent would make you indifferent in between a uh, gamble and receiving this certain amount. So these two things here are equal. That those two things here are equal. Now, since we are comparing utility under certainty and assuming that uh, the utility function, the first order derivative of the utility function is greater than zero, that is you prefer more wealth to less wealth, then the preceding uh, expression implies that this one is true. So it must be that your sure wealth plus, uh, or your, I'm sorry, your initial wealth plus the expected uh, value of the payoff is greater than W naught plus uh, the certainty equivalent, right? And, and th th again, this was what we defined earlier. You, you wouldn't be willing to pay exactly 
the amount of um, W0 plus expected value of Z, you would be willing to pay a price less than that amount because you wouldn't, uh, if you were going to be willing to pay for uh, exactly that amount, you shouldn't just go for it at all because uh, that the value of your final wealth will be risky. Whereas if you went for it, at it's equal to its uh, full price. Um, uh, that would be something that is generally not risky because you already have your wealth with you. So it's not a wise investment for you to immediately go at it at the expected value of the gamble. You need to go at it at a price less than the expected value of the gamble. And this latter thing implies that that, that difference is greater than zero, which we said, okay, this one is just going to be pi W naught Z tilde, right? That's your insurance premium. And this difference between the, uh, the expected payoff and the certainty equivalent is defined as the risk premium or your insurance premium. So I think to, to get this better, uh, let's uh, go with uh, an example and we're going to go with this mathematical example. So, uh, Consider an individual with some uh, level of uh, wealth and a utility function defined over that wealth, which is equal to ln w, uh, the utility function being ln w. Then the individual um, has an initial wealth of 500,000. So this is w naught, right? And faces some gamble or some investment in which he will receive 100,000 pesos with some probability 0.5 and lose uh, 50,000 with some probability 0.5. Okay, so uh, we're asked first, what is the expected payoff of the risky investment? Second, what is the individual certainty equivalent for the risky payoff of this investment? And third, what is the individual's risk premium? So let's, let's try to answer that one by one. So let's go with the first one. So what is the expected payoff of the risky investment? Okay, so uh, we're, the risk, so we're gonna calculate for that. So uh, in this example, again, we have two states of the world. So states, S, we have one wherein uh, is win, okay, win, uh, two if it's lose, okay. Then the probability as stated there is both 0.5, ability, TS, that's 0.5 for both. Then we have the value of the payoff, value of Z tilde, so that's if, if the person wins, he or she gets a hundred thousand, right? And then if he or she loses, that's minus fifty thousand, minus fifty thousand. Therefore, uh, the first question just asks you what is the expected payoff of the risky investment. Then you just use a simple expected value formula. So that's the expected value of z is just equal to zero point five times a hundred thousand plus 0 0.5 times negative 50,000. This would be equal to this one is 50,000 minus uh, this one is minus 25,000, right? So this would be equal to 25,000. So the expected payoff is 25,000. So we can write that there. Expected Z is equal to 25,000. Okay. Next. Uh, we have here two. The question is asking, what is the individual's certainty equivalent for the risky payoff or investment? Well, uh, as we said, right, uh, in, order for that, in order for us to compute for that, it must be that the expected utility of your initial wealth plus you partaking in the risky prospect should be equal to your utility when you're, it's just your wealth, your initial wealth, plus some uh, certainty equivalent. So that's plus C E W naught Z tilde, right? And uh, what happens is if the individual invests, so if the individual, if the individual invests in the risky security, risky security, uh, his final wealth, his final wealth, W has a PDF below. Okay, so we're going to form the PDF. So again, two states, okay, one wherein he wins, two wherein you lose, then you have a probability, both 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Then 
value final wealth. So remember, the consumer started off with a level of wealth, which is 500,000. So that's W naught. So this is W naught, which is 500,000. And if he or she wins, so that's uh, plus 100,000. So this one will be equal to 600,000. Then, uh, whoops, 600,000. And if they lose, it's going to be 500,000 minus 50,000, right? 50,000. And that's going to be equal to uh, 450,000, right? And uh, since you know, uh, so essentially, right, this is the value of final wealth. Uh, you want to, since we're going to get something which is the expected utility of wealth, we need to get uh, this value final wealth evaluated to our utility function. So the utility of that, utility WS, this is just going to be LN 600,000. Then this one will be LN 450,000, right? So we're going to evaluate those values of final wealth to the utility function, right? So how do we solve that? Well, you know that um, when we solve for the expected utility of, uh, well, of wealth with the risky prospect, right, that's just equal to 0 0.5 times this utility value here. So this is 0 0.5 times LN 600,000 uh, plus 0 0.5 times uh, LN 450,000, right? Then if we solve for this, this will be equal to 13.16084, right? So that's going to be that value there. Now, recall, right, you know that W naught is equal to 500,000. You know that's equal to 500,000. And uh, the, the certainty equivalent, as by definition, it's a certain outcome. So what we can do is we can sort of manipulate the other side of the equation. So we're, we're looking at this equation here and then we're going to manipulate that because we saw, we know what this is, which is equal to this one. What we need to try and solve for is this, but we do know this, right? We do know that. So we can solve for the certainty equivalent already. So you just uh, apply the formula. So that's U W naught plus the certainty equivalent W naught Z tilde is equal to the utility uh, 500,000, right? This equation here is just essentially equal to W naught, which is 500,000, that's this one, plus some certainty equivalent, yeah. Z tilde. And all we need to do is we need to just express this in terms of our utility function. And our utility function, just, just so that you recall, is U is equal to LNW, right? So all we need to do is just plug this into the, the function. So we're going to get uh, this is equal to LN right, 500,000 plus whatever the certainty equivalent ends up being, right? That's going to be equal to that. And you know that uh, by, by our formula, it should be that the expected utility of wealth plus the risky payoff should be equal to the utility of the sure of your initial wealth plus some certainty equivalent w not z tilde so you know that this one is essentially this one you but you also know this one and this one is just 13.16084 so you just plug it in right so this is going to be 13.16084 equal to ln okay uh, 500000 plus the certainty equivalent, W naught Z, right? Then if you can sort of simplify, okay, you, you simplify the entire expression. So what we typically do is to take out the LN, you raise both, uh, you use the exponential and then you simplify, then you get the certainty equivalent, W naught Z, is gonna be equal to 19,615.2423. And this is the certainty equivalent of this particular problem. Now, uh, the last question is just asking for the risk premium. And the risk premium, premium should be easy to derive. And uh, th that's because uh, we already have the formula for that. We already have the certainty equivalent. And we know the expected value of the, uh, of the outcome, uh, of the payoff, rather, which is this one that we solved for in one, which is 25,000. So if you recall, 
the risk premium is just defined as this pi w naught z tilde is equal to the expected value of uh, the payoff less the certainty equivalent w naught z tilde. And this one, which is w naught z tilde, should be equal to the expected value of z, that's just 25,000, that's what we solved for in one, minus the certainty equivalent, which is 19,615.2423, and this should be uh, equal to uh, 5,384.7577. And this is your risk uh, premium. That's 5,384.7577. Okay, and uh, that's uh, our discussion on a deeper dive between the risk premium and the certainty equivalent. I hope in this video where you were certain, uh, you were able to ascertain how these two concepts are very interrelated and in how they constitute uh, a potential decision under uncertainty being sort of pseudo transformed into uh, a certain problem and how the certainty equivalent is some measure of an absolute uh, risk aversion of absolute risk aversion. So in the next video, we're going to start to formalize our concepts wherein we sort of transform these concepts into their uh, rates of return, which is more commonly used in finance. So thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.